reaches the atmosphere of Mars, traveling 17,000 miles an hour. Then Aries pops out of the aeroshell and uh, unfolds and begins its flight. Dr. Levine, what will Aries be able to tell us about Mars that we don't already know? Another very interesting thing an airplane can do that an orbiter can't do is sample the atmosphere from within the atmosphere. We call that in situ sampling. And the airplane will carry instrumentation that will actually bring samples of the Mars atmosphere in the airplane where we analyze it with special chemical instrumentation. And one of the things that we can look for, and one of the things we plan to look for, are certain gases in the atmosphere of Mars that are only produced by biological activity. Recent observations from the Mars Express orbital satellite have detected chemical signatures that show the presence of methane gas on Mars. The discovery of methane is important because it's known that 99.9 percent .9 of all methane found in our Earth's atmosphere is produced by living organisms. The positive detection of methane on Mars gives us a great deal of hope that life does in fact exist there. But the satellite observations that took these measurements can only see a very broad section of Mars and are not able to pinpoint the source of the methane. This is where the Ares aircraft would come in. It would be able to travel to a promising spot and fly low enough to pinpoint the source of the methane. Once the methane source is pinpointed, the instruments aboard Ares would be able to determine if the methane is in fact a signature of life. This is very important because the measurements returned from Ares could definitively prove the existence of life on another world. Now this is an unmanned aircraft, right? So what type of instruments will be on board Ares? Right now, if we had to decide on the science payload, we would pick an instrument that analyzes the atmosphere. We would also have an instrument which would look at the ground of Mars as we fly over, and it will measure the mineralogy and chemical composition of the ground. We'll also study magnetism in the crust of Mars. And one of the most exciting instruments on the airplane is not really a scientific instrument. It's a video camera. The video camera will be in the tail of the plane. As we fly, the airplane will be in the foreground, and in the background, you'll see the Mars surface as we fly over. What better way than to bring the public, to bring the world with us as we fly through the atmosphere of Mars? We believe we can help rewrite the textbook about planet Mars with our first flight of Ares on Mars. So how will you control Ares from the Earth? Will it be done remotely? We're not going to control Ares remotely because the time it takes for a radio signal to go from Earth to Mars or Mars to Earth can be 15 minutes to 30 minutes because of the distance involved. We will pre-program Ares, and if something happens during the one-year flight to Mars, we can alter the computer program. We can transmit uh, new instructions to the airplane in the spacecraft as it's flying to Mars. If Ares is going to be flying in the Martian atmosphere, how do you test it here on Earth? The atmosphere of Mars is very, very thin. It's about 1% of the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, near the surface of Mars, the atmosphere is like the Earth's atmosphere at 100,000 feet. This presents a very interesting problem because, as you know, an airplane depends on lift to fly. Lift depends on the density of the atmosphere. So what our engineers had to do is design and build an airplane that, that has a very large area on the wing and the airfoil, which is a curvature of the wing, had to be designed in such a way to give maximum lift. Now, we have tested the airplane uh, in several wind tunnels at the NASA Langley Research Center and in September 2002 we actually did a high altitude test the plane was put in a high altitude helium balloon. It went up over 100,000 feet. It was folded up. We deployed the airplane from the balloon. It started to fall to earth. Then the wings snapped open and the tail opened and it was in controlled flight. So we tested this under Mars conditions. How can the Ares mission contribute to human exploration of Mars and beyond? Ares can scout out the area where humans will land, make sure it's safe, it's level, there are no craters, no mountains, no hills. Because we're close to the planet, we get very high resolution measurements. Another thing that Ares can do, which is very important, is we believe there's water below the surface of Mars. And humans will use that water for drinking and, and for other resource management once on the surface. 
Aries can determine which areas of the surface of Mars have subsurface water. So we believe that even though Aries was designed for scientific exploration of Mars, that there is an important role for Aries to support the exploration of humans, reduce risk, and ensure the safety of humans living and exploring Mars. On December 17, 1903, not too far from the Langley Research Center in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, history was made with the flight of the first powered airplane. Our lives have not been the same since. We are hoping and expect that the first flight on Mars by Ares will revolutionize the way we study planets, will revolutionize the way we obtain scientific data, and will provide a new and important tool to ensure the safety of humans living and exploring on Mars. Researchers believe that this type of aerial exploration may also be used on other planets as well. Of course, one of the key areas of study for NASA researchers here on our home planet is the safety of passenger flights. This concern has been a cornerstone of research from early studies in stalling and icing problems up through our present safety issues. While NASA researchers have had innumerable successes in aircraft safety, one of the most important came with the development of effective wind shear detection. Here's Brad Breckenridge to tell us how NASA researchers